Is it just me or is one of my nose holes much smaller than the other? Run intro! <laughs> All right, so today we're doing, what are we doing? Today we're going to edit a photo together. I'm going to show you my photo editing technique on Lightroom as well as exporting, for, exporting it from Lightroom and doing a little extra on Photoshop. We're going to edit the very photo that's going to be the thumbnail for this video. So stick around, watch, I'm gonna be rambling and hopefully I'll find some cool music on Epidemic Sound to put on the background of this so you don't get bored. But mainly, I will talk and explain my process. Let's get started with the screen recording and cool. All right, let's get started. So the photo that we're going to be editing today is this photo. Where are you? Okay. I think it's a really dope photo. My friend Asan Rose took it with my camera when we were doing a music video. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so we're going to open up Lightroom Classic. <sighs> Go to library, dump the photo. So the photo's here. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's press develop. Okay, so first come first, whatever, I'm gonna try to white balance this. Do I, now my choice is a little bit, this is the most difficult part. Do I want a warmer tone or do I want a cool tone? And I think that defines the route you will take in your photo editing. Uh, for this, I'm going to put a little bit cool uh, and take out the greens by adding maybe five plus five. Now, instead of touching any of the other settings, I'm going to go straight down to collaboration. And I like to add a little, yeah, there you go. Not all the way. Since it's a product, it's not a person, I like to saturate the image. But you can't get away with saturating an image with a, like an actual person. Their skin tones are going to be jacked. So you can't use the same tactic. Um, it's a little too much, maybe. 55. Now we come back. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to do a curve saturation without touching the white RGB line. So we're going to do a red curve. So put one here. I'm gonna drop this down. Ew, it looks green, it looks ugly. It's okay. And I'm gonna bump this up. Then I'm gonna go to green. I'm gonna bump this down. I know you're thinking like this is gonna come out really shitty, but you'll see. It already looks so cool. Like I. Anyways, we have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna bump it up until I like it. I'm not gonna bump it up too much. Um, blue, I mean, I'm happy with this, but for the sake of teaching you, I'm going to keep a little bit of blues in the shadows. I'm not gonna drop it as much as the other ones. And I see, if I put this back and match the other S-curves, it's gonna be a really, it's like, it's like giving it a pop of contrast. If you equivalently do every red, blue, and green the same S-curve, it will be the perfect contrast to add to your picture, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna make the blue a little bit less. Then I'm gonna to go to the RGB uh, total. I wanna make it pop a little bit more with the whites, the highlight section, and the mid-tones and drop the shadows a little, no, just, no, I'm gonna keep the shadows the same. I don't want it to lose the detail. See, I could add a fade to it, but I don't want to. I think if you add a fade, it loses 
more texture and depth so I'm going to leave the blacks then I'm gonna the okay the waveform is pretty hectic right now uh, I'm gonna drop the con contrast to maybe 20 yeah I'm gonna drop the contrast to 25 uh, the highlights I'm gonna bump up the highlights let's see what it looks like without I'm gonna bump up the highlights I'm gonna crush the blacks a little bit more 17 I'm gonna drop the shadows hmm so I'm gonna drop the shadows just a tiny bit and you could be technically canceling things out but I go through each and every section I don't miss one I'm increasing the whites and that's completely blown out so I, I lost interest since it's a product I'm going to increase texture but then add noise reduction later it's gonna look a little cartoony but that's okay I'm gonna bump up clarity but not too much where it looks crappy maybe to like 11 but I'm gonna drop down texture I'm gonna drop down texture I'm gonna use the other way I'm gonna drop down texture and not use noise reduction and just add clarity okay so what do we have so far I think it's how do you even show before and after oh there it is so now you can see a little bit before and after look how different that look how amazing that looks instead of bumping up the contrast working with the curves is so powerful and I've done this so many times that I'm kind of fast with it and my eye can see but you need to put in the work and train yourself train your eye my style could be crap to somebody else so I'm happy with it as long as you're happy with your own editing that's what's important and don't ask for other people's advice you have to just put your work and time in one of the biggest mistakes I used to make was hey did you think my photo was good and they'll be like no or give me a critique and it would break my heart so step away from that give yourself critiques and always try to better yourself I think that's the best tactic to go now how do I stop this there you go so vibrance adds more blues while saturation adds more yellows so I'm going to increase the vibrance and lower the saturation <sighs> okay I'm kinda rushing through this but let's try to keep it underneath 15 minutes um, let's see now I touch all the hue curves and see what happens all the way left and right so obviously nothing's happening with that one see now I see my options I'm like oh I could go to red route or I could go to the yellow route and I I'm choosing to go to the red route red pill or blue pill right I don't want to put too much so I test out both sides hmm I gotta make sure I look good hmm. okay uh, I check out both sides but I'm gonna put a little shade of red in the yellows nope nothing in the greens see I, I don't I'm not digging the whole aqua so I'm gonna try to keep it more blue that's where the purple comes in so let's keep it more blue the purples are fine magenta's fine now to bump up saturation for the red see the only thing that's changing is that little light and I like that light red so I'm gonna keep that that way I don't like this like if I bumped up the orange I think it looks lame I'm gonna just put it up to plus five I don't like the yellows either I'm gonna put that to minus minus 15 there is a hint of green on the edges of the buildings that's crazy it must be some kind of banding or whatever I'm just gonna put that to 23 I'm gonna introduce a little bit of aqua saturation and blue saturation to separate it maybe 21 okay luminance I'm gonna darken the luminance so the light pops out more and I'm gonna darken the orange so the wing looks more red 
So if I do it too much, it just blows out. But if I darken it, it comes more into detail. I'm going to lower the yellows too, just a tad bit, maybe 15. So this is a really cool technique to just move it left and right to the extremes so you know what your artistic route is. Um, I'm going to increase the aquas and the blues because that gives the metal, the metallic, uh, more of a pop. So I'm going to do that to 23. I always like to add a little highlights and shadows, but my favorites are yellow. But maybe blue is better. No, I like yellow. I always add yellow. Add yellow and then a little hint of blue in the No, not blue. Just two of red, that's it. Sharpening, if you hold the option key uh, and click it, you could see what you're sharpening and I only wanna sharpen this section. So then let go of the option, hold the option. Let go of the option, hold the option. And then bump up the sharpening on that. Noise reduction, bump up noise reduction. 24 yeah 24 is good all right that looks boss now we're going to export this export name it Mavic yo get rid of this oh wait no Mavic yo highest quality possible and export Step one's finished. Okay, so now we're going to go to step two, which I use the same process for m editing my models. I, I do the same process every time. So let's open up Photoshop. All right. Where is it? Nice. Okay, now we're going to drop this in. Cool, 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 First things first, we're gonna duplicate layer and frequency separation. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Then we're gonna go to filter, noise, median. Median is always the best route to take for frequency separation. Let's not lose the details completely. We're gonna add it to 16. Then we're going to duplicate it one more time. We're going to add texture, put it to the top, go to image. Um, where is it? Where is it? Apply image, select your FS, go to subtract, click OK, go to normal, and then put linear light so i'm going to go over that process really quickly frequency separation duplicate layer click on the first one which is the color layer then you go to filter then you go to noise then you go to median it's done then you make another duplicate then you go to image then you go to apply then you apply the image to the color layer then you go to subtract then you apply then you go to linear light and put the blending mode as linear light now let's group them together. All right, so they're grouped together. Now, since it's not that important, we're just doing it for a thumbnail. I'm going to grab my brush tool, not my brush tool, where is it? It is spot healing brush tool, spot healing brush tool. All right, cool, so I got my spot healing brush tool. I'm going to Get rid of some of the dust on the lens. Let's zoom in. No, zoom in. How do I zoom in? Okay, so we have this little bad boy. See this little stupid thing here? Boom, gone. We got this little stupid thing here. Boom, gone. 
Oh, what is this? Boom, not there anymore. Gone. Man, I gotta take care of my gimbal. I mean, my... Oh, no, 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 I'm taking... There looks like a weird highlight right there. I don't like it. Gone, gone. Anything else that's sticking out like a weirdo? Nope, that's it. Go back to fit, 100, or fit screen. Yeah, that looks much cleaner. The lens looks cleaner. Everything looks like brand new. Awesome. That's an old drone. Uh, now we're going to merge all the layers. Right click on the layer, flatten image. Boom, unlock it. So we unlock that image, duplicate the image again, duplicate, press OK. Then you go to blending modes, you go to screen. This is the quickest way to dodge and burn. You so you just put the blending mode to screen. So we'll go over that again. I duplicated the layer. I made this copy. Then I put the blending mode from normal to screen. Then I double click it. This uh, template thing pops up. It says layer styles. All right. So what I'm going to do is you see this underlining layer, this black part. Let's move this here. No, 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 not there. Let's move it here. Uh, we're just going to swipe it to the right. Look at that, I love that. I love that extra texture it shows on the hood. Um, but I'm trying to keep texture, like making it look a little more dynamic. So when you hold Option and you click this black, it separates. So you hold the Option and then you click this and it separates. And then you take the right side and you take it to the right. I'm gonna take it around here. And I'm going to pull the blacks back all right there. Now, I don't want the rest of the photo to be all crazy. So I'm going to mask it. And I'm going to do a really quick mask. So I'm just going to press this little thing that's called Add Layer Mask at the bottom next to FX. I click that. I go to my brush tool. Um, to expand your brush and de... To expand your brush... Come on. Press these two buttons. They will expand and decrease your brush, okay? These two. Boom, boom. I'm going to expand it all the way to the biggest size you can possibly be, and then I'll press X. That'll make it black. And I'm going to get rid of all the highlights that don't belong on the Mavic. Sorry about that. I just wanted to speed that up, and it's done. Um, we're going to duplicate another one, and this time we're going to call it Darken. So this is the burn part. So you just, you duplicated the layer, right? So the first one we screened. The second one, we're going to multiply. You see how dark you got? So just double click it, do the same process, but instead of the darks, you're going to go to the highlights. Option, click to split, drag those highlights back. Wow. Now that's way too much, so we're just going to lower that fill. We're going to lower the fill to maybe 24%. Before, you see how like more it pops out? Like the eye goes straight to the gimbal, you know, of the thing. We're going to just accept this for the sake of accepting it. <sighs> we're going to merge these layers together. Oh, crap. No, we're not going to merge these layers together. We're going to flatten the image. Yep, there you go. So let's recap. I finished frequency separation. Then I did, then it was just I flattened the image, which is totally destructive. Do not do this this way, but this is just a fast way of doing it. Then I had just a layer by itself. I duplicated that layer and I put it in screen blending mode. It just blew it out. Then I double clicked it and went to the bottom. I took the shadows, I held option and I clicked it. I separated the two and it created this really cool uh, effect. You'll, you saw it. Then I did that, I masked out all the extra highlights so just the, you know, that part pops out. Um, the second thing I did was create another duplicate and now I worked with the shadows. So I duplicated the original layer, put it as multiply and mess with it a little bit. 
But since it's such a strong effect when you do it multiply, I lowered the fill to 23%. So now we're going to do the final adjustments and we're gonna be done. My second favorite thing ever in Photoshop is selective color. We're gonna go through each color individually until it's perfect. So this is the reds, right? And the reds are pretty strong, so I'm going to make it a little bit more red by separating, uh, subtracting the cyans. But if I do, yeah, subtracting the cyans by 17. Magenta, if you wanna add it a little bit, yeah, I wanna add a little bit of magenta, eight. Yellow, we're going to leave the yellow alone, zero yellow. Blacks. We're gonna increase blacks by 37 in the reds. Now we go to yellows. Nope, I don't wanna do anything to that. I don't wanna do anything. It looks like yellow might be just nothing. No, actually, I'm gonna, in the yellows, I'm gonna decrease the yellows by 36. And also darken the yellows by 37. Greens, nothing in the greens. We're skipping greens. We're going to cayennes. Oh, this one affects the camera a lot. So now you can have this yellow, silver, metallic look to it, or you can add a little bit of blue to it so it pops out. And I think I'm gonna go with the blue. Magenta, but I'm gonna take the blue out of the lens cap. As you can tell, it makes it much brighter. So I'm gonna decrease the magenta by minus 11. Ooh, getting rid of the yellows makes it look so cool. Yeah, I like it. So by getting rid of the yellows, I made it back into blue. So awesome. I didn't want to lose that blue by getting rid of the magenta, but getting the rid of the yellow makes it blue again. Also, you can make it brighter with just... I'm going to put the blacks at minus 8. Now we mess with the blues. I'm going to decrease the blues by minus 11. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, maybe like 24. And we're gonna go straight to whites. No, we're not gonna touch the cyan. Oh yeah, okay. We're gonna decrease the magentas from the whites, the highlights. We're gonna increase the yellows by seven. I'm gonna make the whites a little bit more bright. No, darker, yeah, bright by six, minus six. We go to the neutrals. Now these ones affect the picture a lot. So I'm gonna add three cayennes to the neutrals. And then also maybe two to the magentas. I'm gonna leave the yellows alone. <clears throat> and I'm gonna add blacks, just to make it a little more contrasty, to plus four. Then we're gonna go straight to the blacks. Now you have a little bit of choice. I'm going to get rid of some of the red by adding cyan to the blacks, maybe plus seven. as well as magenta by plus two, and yellow by plus eight, and don't touch the blacks. Cool, now one more thing left is color balance. Plus four at the mid-tones, I made it a little bit more red. I'm gonna leave the greens and purples alone. I'm gonna leave the blues alone. Highlights. I'm gonna put a little bit of cyan. And you are canceling certain things out by doing other things. But the way the process works for me is that in the end, I remember what cancels out and what doesn't cancel out. So I'm sweating, holy shit, this aperture light is freaking hot. So at the end of the day, you are getting what you want. You're kind of like t testing everything in the buffet to pick what you want, pick what you don't want. And I think it's a great... <clears throat>
Now we mix with the shadows, add a little bit of reds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> cool. What should we title this? What should we title this? Um, how to, because this is important. How to edit. Shoot, this is going to be tough. Huh. How to edit photos. I'm, I wish you guys were here to help me. Uh, let's see. While well, thinking about this, I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to think of an idea and then bring it back. I got it. So for this, we're going to say zero to hero color grading. The rest, because this next part is a little flavor, 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 because it's going to take me a long time and I don't want this video to hit 50 minutes. But thank you for sitting through that. I know I'm annoying and I know I talk a lot, but I hope I taught you something. And I, I really like teaching, so I want to get better at it and subscribe. I'm going to shut up now. Peace. Have a nice day.